Welcome everybody. Level M diecast. Today we're going to do another showcase. We're going to be doing some Road Champs Deluxe series. We'll do a little bit of a, a little bit of background on Road Champs as well. Um you know, growing up Road Champs that was that was the thing you wanted to have at least when I was growing up. How was a Matchbox they didn't have all these cool features and, and, and all these cool real world trucks and stuff like that. You know, these things were uh, sold under a bunch of different brand names. Toys R Us had them under Fast Lane. They were sold under Kmart brand name. Um, even towards the end of, of Road Champs line, they even sold a fire truck and a bus under Old Navy store name. Kind of interesting. Uh, this first one is the LaFrance boom truck, I guess you could call it, fire truck. It's not a ladder truck, obviously, but this was released in a couple different liveries. I do not have more than just this one. Um, Road Champs also did a brief uh, stint with some Sonic Flasher type models that had sounds and lights and stuff like that. Um, I believe that one was a neon yellow for this model. Um, this model boom extends all the way up. The carriage moves, rotates around. Uh, everything that you'd expect a fire truck to do. Uh, it actually extends much, much larger than my uh, studio allows. So we'll let that roll around. Now, Road Champs first came on the scene in the 70s. And uh, originally they were they were under JRI. Now JRI was uh, Jack Robbins. He's the founder, um, and I actually have. There you go, JRI. So originally um, JRI, when they were announced, they uh, they were a diecast distributor, and he decided he wanted to make his own stuff. Uh, so they worked with Yaming. Um, this Let's see if I might be able to get it on here a little bit better. So these were the original ones that they came out with. Yeah, I mean castings. So under their own brand name, and that ran through the late seventies into the early eighties, and then in the early eighties they decided to start making their own castings. Um, and when they did, that's where these ones came from. This is one of their first original castings. Z28 Camaro. Now, they switched from Hong Kong to China in 83. Uh, so later models, you'll see, they'll be China-based. And now, everything that came after Road Champs is made in China. Uh, Road Champs went through... 2001, I believe, is the last year. Um, they made a bunch of um, WWE-type buses and weird stuff and just crazy paint jobs and just, I mean, stuff that nobody wanted. And Ultimately, they, they went belly up. But while they were around, they made some fantastic items. This Elgin Pelican Street Sweeper, um, this one's a little bit easier to showcase you guys. All the features down below. It's even got steerable wheels. Um, this came in a number of, of colors as well. This is a, I believe this was the original release in cream. Um, it came out in white, and then it came out in a couple other ones in their bigger and is better line, um, where they basically were just releasing anything that they could under the sun. Um, but you know, these were. These were like the precursor to nowadays real working rigs and whatnot. You know, these models, with all their working features and playability were fantastic. And they were actually quite durable models uh, for being made for kids. Um, obviously, they they do not scale to each other. Um, that was one thing that always bothered me with Road Champs is they just kind of made whatever and they made whatever size work. Um, but nonetheless, they were still good models. One of the more popular ones, I believe, would probably be this Winnebago Chieftain RV. Um, 
this again came in many many different liveries i only have one unfortunately um finding these mints is is a little bit takes a little bit of effort they're not rare per se it just you got to look for them um you know a lot of people a lot of kids played with these when they were new and so you can find these beat up all the time but you want to be a customizer maybe tear one apart um, it's quite the quite the interior piece on this one now obviously this doesn't have any working features because you know this rv didn't have pull outs or anything like that like your modern day stuff will so there really wasn't anything on there for them to make pull outs now interesting those air conditioner units on the top are actually die cast metal which is pretty cool you'd never see something like that nowadays that would be plastic for sure um but you know i like it the other thing is this hook assembly that they have here um rather than rivets those are that's a that's a dying thing um if you guys notice on a lot of new models that type of assembly is going away and as a matter of fact um the new matchbox bentley suffers from that as well as it has no interior which is rather interesting uh the chevy stepside van in usps deco um, it also came in a uh, Frito-Lay Deco uh, with Chester Cheeto on the side. Um, they actually had some police ones as well. Um, this one's this one's a fairly popular model. Um, it's it's perfect for dioramas. It's perfect for customizing. Um, it's it's a spot-on casting. Um, it's got working features. You know, the side door opens up. The rear doors open up throw those open for you guys um and it's a hollowed out interior you know it's not thrown together that just takes up space you know this is actually designed that um you know kids kids could actually throw something in there and pretend that they were actually delivering or transporting stuff around i mean these these were truly intended to be kids toys roll on to the plethora of internationals that they've done um i really like this tow truck however it doesn't do anything it, it's purely a display model um and, and even the the wheel lift isn't far enough back to actually put a car on the back um, which is which is unfortunate I think that this casting would be, or at least the back of this casting is, is a good donor for a custom. Um, you know, and just as a, as a, as a uh, comparison real quick to you guys, uh, there's Greenlight's Ram Wrecker. Uh, similar similar back pieces um but shockingly that green line one actually has some functionality to it you can actually use it to to pose a car on which is really nice obviously the uh, road champs is not exactly 164 but it's close it's close moving on with the tow trucks You know they this rollback um the funny thing is 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 the jordan name that's that's actually licensed um this rollback is is a licensed piece um but i mean there's there's nothing specific about it that makes it a jordan rollback um which i find perplexing um what i what i think is really the way it worked is they just license the name to give it some some authenticity which is a good thing um this model was available um as as like a pro comp where tons of tow, tow companies can get their their deco painted on it they could hand them out at 
events and and for employee gifts and all that good stuff like that. Um, you'll find them on eBay all the time, all the time, just all the time. Um, I have two versions, so I have this version, and then I have this version. Um, and this version has a little bit of history for me. I was at a local uh, swap meet. It's called Tri-State Swap Meet. Um, they have it at the National Western Stock Show down here in Denver. And I was rocking through there, and I found this. It was blister. And I picked it up and uh, asked the guy how much he wanted. He said he wanted five bucks. And I said, okay, I'll take it. And I heard somebody gasp from behind me. And I looked behind, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to buy that? He's like, if you didn't buy it, I was going to buy it. I was like, okay. And he's like, um, you know, I used to work for Road Champs. I was like, really? And so we had a conversation, and the, the gentleman actually worked in the marketing department. And uh, he's he's built quite the collection of Road Champs stuff uh, over the years, um, just as nostalgic, you know. And I thought that was pretty cool, you know. I thought that was really cool. So there's, um, obviously, I, I didn't let him have this. Um, just for the scarcity of these, I, you know, I feel bad about it, but um, it, it came to a good home. It came to a good home. So a little bit of, a little bit of history there for you guys. The International was quite popular. Um, it was really easy to just use a cab and then make a bunch of rear parts for it. Um, and that's definitely what they did, and they rolled with it, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I really think that there's a lot of other things they could have done. Um, but I, I think that this is one of the most unique ones they did, this recycle truck. Um, and it does have some features. You can set down a couple of those. You can also do the ones in the rear. Um, you know, I, I think that this is... Uh, you know, this is more of a display thing for me. I'm not really sure kids could really play with this to the full extent. Um, and being that that whole back part was plastic, um, I find these all the time in dump bins. And they're just, the doors are all gone. All those step ladders on the back are gone. Uh, just just destroyed. But, you know, nonetheless, you know, you can find these on eBay. They're super cheap. Um, I think the last one I saw was like 8 bucks with free shipping and it was still blistered. Can't go wrong. They did a beverage truck. Of course, they did a beverage truck. This one came in tons of different liveries. I only have one. Um, you know, if I was pursuing these on eBay, it'd be a lot easier to pick up more liveries. But these I kind of just limit to finding at shows and whatnot. Um, unless I get a good deal. But, you know, I use eBay to, to kind of fill holes rather than, uh, you know, hunt specific stuff. Now... It's pretty cool having the dolly on the back. Um, it's just such an unnecessary detail, but it's it's so so appropriate for this this beverage truck. Um, the only other thing I think would have been even cooler is if they would have had the bars that went over the rear wheels um, to access the the upper compartments. But I'm sure they knew as a kid's toy those would be instantly annihilated and, and broken off. Um, the back does open up. Um, the interesting thing is that the doors open on both sides. However, they use the same space inside. Um, but they only go halfway in, which is kind of interesting. Um, just just the way that they assembled stuff back in the day. Just cool stuff. Cool stuff, guys. We're going to keep rolling with International. Actually, we're going to do this one because this was the first one. So the International Bus um, is its own casting entirely. The, the detail on the front of this one is by far better than the other ones. Uh, it's far more appropriate. The other ones are kind of chunky. Um, the, door, the stop sign does open up. It's the only moving feature on it. Um, but this thing is insane because it is completely metal. It is metal body, metal base. Um, it's a heavy weight really nice um there's a couple of versions of this obviously this one is the golden rule uh, this was the initial release and they also did just your standard school bus and 
put the international logo on the side, which is pretty cool. Uh, it would have been would have been interesting if they'd have put something on the side, just some made up school, some made up elementary, something like that. Would have been would have been pretty cool. But other than that, those they're, those two are the exact same. There's a little shade difference in the yellow. That's about it. We'll switch gears a little bit here. Big O trash truck. Uh, this is a Peterbilt. And uh, it's obviously nowhere near to scale with the rest of them. But that's okay. Um, it does have the moving feature where the inside dumps and then the back opens up. Oh, look at that. It'll actually pose for me. Um, I have two versions of this. There's um, at least two more versions that I know of. Uh, one of the gray ones was a standard release. Uh, there's also one that's like bug disposal or something like that. Uh, not a deco I'm really interested in getting. It's definitely definitely catered towards kids. But, you know, for as simple as this model is and for as many lack of pieces it is, it's actually, it's actually quite nice. Um... I always curious about uh, maybe tearing one of these apart if I find a beater one day and, you know, putting some nice wheels and stuff on and giving some detail. Um, but I'm not much of a customizer. It's just more of a hobby thing. So the last color we got here is a, another waste management. So both of these were waste management. Old school logo. Uh, this actually matches the recycle truck. Um, I do not believe that they uh, were released in the same release. If I remember correctly, they were released in two separate releases. But they pair well together. Clearly not to scale. But I really feel like these are, these are a precursor towards real working rigs and things like that. Um, you know, a little bit bigger scale moving parts, um, much more playability, a lot more durable than real working rigs are, but, <laughs> you know, these were made at a different time. These were made at a different time when production was a lot, a lot simpler and a lot cheaper. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's, it's just not inexpensive to do that anymore. Um, everything's a penny pinching budget thing and, you know, it's, that's just the way it works. So, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, let me know if you like Road Champs or not. Um, we're going to roll with some, some oddball stuff, and we're just going to keep it going. And uh, we will see you on the next video.